In this lecture, we'll look at both organizing and staffing. Rarely are individuals in an organization able to achieve common goals without some form of structure that helps them get to that end point. Organizing is the structuring of activities to accomplish objectives and doing this in an efficient and effective manner. Organizing is important for several reasons. It helps create synergies among various players where the effect of the whole is greater than the sum of its parts by using people's individual skills and organizing them in a way that enhances the, the, this, the balance or the interaction among those skills to reach some greater objective. It also establishes some lines of authority to help with decision making and clarify objectives and improves communication and helps avoid duplication of effort, duplication of resources when not effective or useful. It can improve competitiveness also by speeding up decision making and allowing for clarity in action. Organizing occurs continuously because as things change, organizing has to change as well. Also, we have staffing. Once managers have figured out what work needs to be done and how to organize it, they might need some additional skills or some additional people. So they have to make sure that the organization has the capabilities and capacities that are necessary. To do that, you might have to hire additional employees or move people into different roles. Hiring people to carry out the work that in, in an organization, that is what is called staffing, finding the right people and positioning them correctly in the organization. Beyond recruiting people for positions within a firm, managers determine what skills are needed for specific jobs, how to motivate and train people, how much to pay them, what incentives to provide, what benefits to provide, and how to prepare them for higher level jobs. So when staffing requirements need someone with greater experience, there is a ready bench of people that can be drawn upon to take the higher level and more responsible or, or jobs with more authority. We'll talk about that a little bit of that, a little bit more about that later. An example of staffing, monster.com is a company that's involved in the staffing world. Some companies choose to, hoot, to, to hire through online job websites like monster.com. It's one of the largest websites that do employment. And using these kind of sites can, can, can really facilitate fast hiring. Another aspect of staffing, sort of the downside of staffing, is downsizing, which is a need to when an organization is no longer able to support its employee body and there's a need to eliminate a significant number of employees from the organization. Um, this has talked, been talked about a lot after the Great Recession and so it's something that you have to think about. Um, staffing can be outsourced to companies that focus on hiring and managing employees um, and many times, uh, many firms downsize by outsourcing the production or sales or technical positions of the companies to other companies to lower their labor costs. Now, if there's not enough work to go around for people, you can lay them off, but you can also outsource, them to, uh, outsource that group to another company. So not only can they provide their skills and capabilities to your firm, but since they're working for a third party outsourcer, they can provide those skills to another to other firms as well. So that's one way actually that even though you're perhaps no longer working for a particular company, um, those jobs could be preserved if that model is being used. Sometimes it involves a reduction in wages and the like. Downsizing has helped numerous firms reduce their costs quickly and become more profitable or become more profitable after some lengthy losses in a short period of time. They can recover. Uh, downsourcing and outsourcing, however, have painful consequences. Obviously, the biggest casualty are those that lose their jobs, their insurance and pensions, others. Some people can find new jobs quickly, others don't. It's one reason to keep your skills up, um, make sure you have a, a, a good solid network and the like in case these kinds of things happen. Another victim, of course, is the morale of those remaining. It's difficult to keep working when some of your friends or colleagues um, are no longer there. So a good manager, effective manager, 
will continue to push forward um, helping the people that are there go through the uh, the grief that's associated with it but also start to think about the organization's future and their role in achieving a very positive and um, an optimistic future it's one of the, the the difficult parts of management but it's also a very very important one next lecture we'll talk about a few of the other items uh, the, the other parts of management